I'm Matthew Bishop of The Economist and co-author of Philanthropic Capitalism. I'm talking with Errol Demolin, uh, founder of Wonga.com, a financial website that provides uh, loans to consumers uh, in ways that uh, they can really choose how much they borrow, for how long, and what rate of interest uh, they pay. Um, Errol, it's, it's a company that has grown very quickly but also attracted a lot of controversy. On the one hand, people say you're empowering consumers. On the other hand, there's, people are saying you're exploiting consumers by charging very high interest rates that maybe they can't handle. Which is it? So, so we, we're, I mean, we're making a really useful service available. We understand that people need cash occasionally to finance particular short-term needs. And so what we're doing is in the most transparent way possible, giving customers control over their own financial situation and allowing them to choose how much they want to borrow for how long and making sure that, avail that information's available and transparent ahead of time. And so, yeah, our customers are super, super happy with the service. Our customer satisfaction ratings are higher than Google's and Apple's, never mind banks and other financial institutions. So people use the service, they like the service. It's become a mass market service offering in the UK in just a few years. And, uh, you yeah, know, our customers are really happy with it. I, mean, I suppose at the heart of the controversy is this notion that people have that there are just certain interest rates that no sane person would pay, you know, once you start to get above an annual rate of, I don't know, 25, 30 percent, you know, surely, you, you know, you, there must be some alternative way of getting the money or there's something failed in the system that's left someone having to pay that much for credit. And yet, do you, do you think there are legitimate ways, well, you obviously think there are legitimate situations in which you would pay interest rates of, that would add up to an annual rate of 100 or 200 more percent? Yeah, look, I, I think... You know, I, th I think that the reality is that when you do, when you provide a service that is in small quantums and is quick and convenient, the costs of providing that service are disproportionate to massive packages. So, for example, if one was to use a black cab in London on a single journey, it's a completely different cost perspective than buying a car. Right. Equally, well, if you stay per journey, cost per journey. So, if you stay in a hotel per night. It's completely different to buying a f an apartment or flat. And so if you took the cost of staying in a hotel per night and annualized it, it would seem insane. But that's not what one's doing. One is consuming a very small product, i.e. a night at a hotel. And you're having to pay for the cost of providing that service with cleaning and new sheets and you know, services, etc., etc. And Wonga is very similar. So Wonga is like the black cab or the hotel room. It is a short-term service done in very small quantum. So the average person takes a hundred pound loan for about 10 days, let's say, and they pay five pounds 50 transmission fee to get the money within 15 minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 1% a day. So it's a pound, you know, a pound per day for the hundred. And so is that a lot? Well, we go off and collect over 8,000 pieces of data before we make that decision. We only accept about a third of applicants, so we actually assuming 24,000 pieces of data for every loan that we make. We're having to absorb bank costs of making the transfers very quickly, debit card costs getting the money back. There's a cost of capital, and we're not subsidized by any government or taxpayer, so it's completely equity funded, the business itself. So we've got a return on the capital. So when you look at the economics of providing a service like this, we feel like the pricing is very fair and our customers feel like it's very fair. And so to pay £15.50 to have that money available, that £100 available for 10 days, feels like it makes sense to people occasionally. But the, the, the essence of it is that it needs to be transparent. People absolutely understand the costs of cash and that's been our clear experience. One just needs to make it available. And so interest rates and APRs are red herrings for this kind of service in the same way as taxi drivers in London being forced to show annualized rates of taxi costs. It just doesn't make sense because that's not how one consumes a product. So what for you, you know, makes this different from being, you know, I guess the extreme fall would be a loan shark or a predatory lender in some sense. It's, it's this notion that the customer is able to make a, a, a rational decision about paying that kind of rate of interest.